Professor Mazran, uh, the title of the speech today is Transition to Democracy or what? What are the challenges for a smooth transition and what are the necessary steps? There are many challenges and a uh, few steps that should be undertaken to overcome these challenges. The first challenge is that of a national reconciliation. Uh, the second challenge is bringing back order to Libya. The way the war has been conducted is, has led to a very fragmented group of, of soldiers and rebels controlling the cities coming from different regions. And that is a problem for organizing an interim government that then is supposed to perform the national reconciliation and re rebuild the, the country and the infrastructure of the country. And there are other problems such as uh, deciding over a constitution, what kind of system, and, and so on and so on. There is also a problem, two major problems in Libya, which are that of a national identity that has been not uh, fostered by 40 years of dictatorship of the regime of Gaddafi, who tried to demolish de facto any sense of identity in the Libyan so first in the, uh, sinking it into the larger sea of Arabism and then into Africanism. Uh, and, the, and, the, and, and the second aspect, which is very important, is that of a political culture. Libyans have not been educated to a political culture that could be conducive to debate, dialogue, liberalism, respect for the law, etc. That has also been to be fostered. So there are many hurdles and very few uh, steps to be undertaken. You say that also that chances for democracy are zero. What are the prospects of a new Libya with a permanent mark of uh, dependency on foreign military intervention? And what form of government should Libya strive for? Libya should strive for a democratic government. I mean, well, what I said is not the chances of a democracy now are zero. If the West pushes to have uh, elections in eight months or something like that and create institutions that are democratic without them springing from the bottom, it, 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 will, it will definitely lead, lead to disaster. Uh, Libyans have to work to recreate their education system, to create a culture that is conducive to debate and to, and to dialogue, and then build the institutions that need they the, 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 the need to have a democracy and then call for election of the government. In the meantime, what is needed is a legitimate government that is centralized uh, with a higher level of authority, not authoritarian, but higher level of authority, to rebuild the, the sense of identity that Libya needs, to reconstruct the country, to re national effect with the national reconciliation uh, efforts, and so on and so on. In that sense, I said the chance of democracy are zero now as they are trying to push. That, that would be a mistake. In your lecture, you said that it is important to consider the uh, events in Libya civil war. Why is that important? And what are the consequences of these events for the whole great Middle East region? If you don't recognize that Libya was a civil war, you can never reconcile the country. So a whole part of people who have supported Gaddafi will feel left out of the new Libya because they were the wrong side and are not given any right or any acceptance or any encouragement to rejoin the common system. Uh, that's why I push always to recognize there were supporters of Gaddafi, they need to be convinced to enter, uh, they need to be accepted. Their choice needs to be accepted as legitimate even though losing one and then incorporated into the, the political system and, uh, and uh, revamped it. Uh, what are the important the importance of Libya is revolutionary in one sense to me. It has shown that the people can take up its arms against the dictator. I think it has carried a lot of importance for uh, what, what, what is going on in Syria and what we go on in other Arab countries. The fact that for the first time the Arab Square is not only in revolt like in Tunisia and in Cairo peacefully, but can take arms and can lead all the way against a repressive system. That is the important consequence for the larger Middle East. It's like a ringing bell, it's like an alarm to dictators that people are not getting anymore or what they were getting before. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you.